Thanks, Chrissy, and thanks everyone for uh, turning up uh, this morning. Uh, yes, uh, an update from uh, from Impact, and uh, I think I've shown this slide a, a few times, but it's interesting to see a number of the companies here over the, this couple of days back in uh, in the centre of resources here in Perth. That many of us have been around for a while, but you sort of get a sense that uh, a number of companies similar to Impact are edging towards significant discoveries, and and we'd like to think that uh, that's the case. Um, because uh, you know, many of us started off like this, uh, but we want to make sure that we don't finish uh, at this particular point. So we're just as motivated today as we were when we first started. And uh, for us, an impact, the key is persistence. And uh, secondly, you've always got to make sure that you're in the right area, the right prospective parts of the, uh, of the country. And you've heard some good stories uh, about that already um, in, uh, yesterday. And um, so look, we've got two very key uh, strategic ground holdings in uh, well-known mineralised terrains. We've got an extensive ground holding in Broken Hill and we're drilling there at the moment for platinum group metals. And um, we also have uh, recently uh, pushed forward with our Commonwealth project in New South Wales in the Lachlan Fold Belt and a long trend from the Boda discovery. And we've got significant porphyry copper target and I'll be talking about these two today. Um, we've also recently uh, pegged quite a large ground holding in Western Australia and part of a a, a look at uh, what was might be closer to home following the, the COVID issues. And uh, we're also still pushing forward with uh, Blackridge, which is our, our nugget field, as uh, Chrissy alluded to. And uh, we've uh, still been very active through the last few months. Uh, capital structure, so look, we have a lot of shares in issue. We have been around for a long time, but uh, look, that's a testament to the fact we've been out there, we've been doing it, we've been drilling um, and, uh, and exploring for a consistent period of time. Um, like many people, we've had a resurgence uh, in the share price, uh, hit uh, probably one of our lowest points here uh, back in March, uh, 0.4 uh, of a cent, but uh, up at around 2.7, 2.8, and so the market cap is probably the highest it's ever been at the moment, which is great news for all of our shareholders. And very strong support from the German shareholders, uh, in particular this group here, um, which is Delphi and uh, Deutsche Balthon, which uh, you will have seen uh, on the register of quite a few companies uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, conference. So still reasonably tightly held. Uh, Broken Hill, uh, we are drilling at the moment and uh, we've been there for a few weeks. Uh, we've uh, had a few logistical issues which we're getting through but uh, it, uh, we're, back on, uh, we're back on track. And one of the reasons that we brought this back to the fore since I spoke here in February is that we've continued to see record palladium and in particular rhodium prices are currently around about $11,000 an ounce which is unbelievable. Um, and that's been driven really by uh, quite a shortage uh, in the palladium market and uh, that's been a function of the fact that uh, most platinum uh, is used in diesel catalytic converters and that's actually fallen off in the last uh, five, six years as the uh, uh, emissions controls have come in on diesel engines. So as a result, most platinum is actually a byproduct, sorry, most palladium is a, uh, a byproduct of platinum mining. And so as a result, we've seen an increasing shortage. Uh, here's a surplus back in 2011. There's been an eight-year deficit in palladium. And in fact, last year was the largest. It was about a million ounces um, deficit. And so this has been driving the uh, extraordinary uh, price increases that we've seen. And, and that's the same with all of the rare PGs, uh, rhodium, uh, iridium, osmium. They're all byproducts of uh, predominantly platinum mining. So uh, it's been a, a very good uh, year for, uh, for those uh, metals. So at Broken Hill, we've got a major position. Um, here's the Broken Hill silver lead zinc mine over about seven kilometres. We're probably one of the largest ground holders. We've been acquiring this strategically over the last few years. Although our focus is on uh, platinum in these sort of belts in blue, there's significant silver lead zinc potential and we're looking at ways of uh, trying to maximise that at the present. So people say, well, Broken Hill's not really known for its nickel. Well, the nickel uh, prospects that we have there have been known for 100 years, but we've done a lot of research on them in the last uh, three or four years um, through a number of universities. And uh, back at uh, 800 million years ago, uh, it appears that Broken Hill sitting here was actually very close to two major nickel deposits, which are now currently uh, in China. Um, back in the, the old Rodinian supercontinent, as it's known. And Jinshuan, of course, is one of the world's, if not the, one of the, if not the largest uh, deposit um, for nickel sulphide, 500 million tonnes at uh, just over a percent nickel and 0.7 copper with uh, some PGEs. So, and this uh, area here in red is a, a deep-seated mantle plume that's come up from the, the core mantle boundary, very hot, and it's brought with it nickel copper sulphide, and so we're in the right geodynamic setting to, uh, to host a, a major deposit. So we have no problems uh, going to Broken Hill to look for um, what we hope is going to be a, a very significant discovery. Um, the four priority prospects, uh, we're working on Morkai and Platinum Springs, 
uh, Red Hill, which is where we delivered some exceptional, uh, very high-grade PGEs a few years ago. And uh, in particular, we're very interested in the scale and size of the Little Broken Hill Gabbro uh, sitting down here at the, uh, at the south. Um, how high grade? Well, this is uh, probably, we believe, sort of the, the highest, um, or not, if not the highest, one of the highest uh, drill intercepts ever uh, recorded in Australia. Um, it's uh, 1.2 metres. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's sort of a sulphide vein. Um, it's carrying uh, exceptional grades, 4.6 rhodium, 7 grams of iridium, 5 of osmium, 3 grams of ruthenium. Now, you don't see that number sort of anywhere uh, in the world apart from a handful of places. This is how exceptional this material is. Um, 10 grams platinum, 10 grams gold, and an amazing 10 ounces of palladium. It's a very palladium-rich uh, system. And just to add to that, there's also 7% nickel, 2% copper, and, uh, and, and some silver. <laughs> so it's got everything in it. It's quite amazing. Um, now, the, uh, we have actually uh, drilled around this uh, back five years ago. Um, it doesn't have a great deal of strike extent, but we're seeing the same um, uh, metal assemblage over quite a reasonable uh, sized area so far. Um, it's a narrow high grade, so just like drilling out Bonanza gold veins, they're not the easiest things. Um, but we've basically got consistent mineralisation over about 100 metres and uh, probably sort of up to sort of between 4 and, uh, and 10 metres thick. Some of these intersections are probably parallel to the structure and it's sitting down and dipping underneath this uh, ultramafic intrusion here. And uh, we're drilling at the moment sort of a long, a long trend and underneath this to see if we can uh, extend that. And, um, but really, uh, one of the big targets has come to the fore in the last uh, few months has been the Little Broken Hill Gabbro. And uh, this is what it looks like uh, on the magnetic uh, data. Here's the scale, two kilometres, and it's very dominated by these two, two magnetic units. And um, uh, amazingly enough, despite all the work that's been done, uh, it's six kilometres long, but there's only one drill hole that's, longer than, that's deeper than 25 metres in this entire intrusion. And, um, and so we've done a magnetic interp. This is a simplified version of it, and uh, so it's quite extensive. Um, here it sits a couple of kilometres away from Red Hills. So this is where the high grade are. And uh, we're carrying out sort of an air core and RC program over the, uh, the top of this intrusion. And the reason for that is that this is actually the cover. So despite the fact that um, uh, this area here has had a number of sort of drill holes and a few things through here, all shallow air core, as I say, um, all less than 25 metres, there's basically been no exploration in this, uh, in this area. Um, we've done an interpretation of the, uh, of the Gabbro. Um, some very interesting things came out of that. Um, basically, this is uh, looking, span, sp spinning the map around. Red Hill is here. Uh, originally, it was probably uh, dipping off uh, to the southeast. And we've identified these zones in through here around which the whole internal structure of the Gabbro is fairly sy um, uh, symmetrical. And so we think these are actually the feeder zones. You'll have heard uh, uh, Chalice uh, talking about their feeder zones and chonoliths and uh, all, all those sort of things. We've got everything here, and we think that these feeder zones here are the keys where the, uh, the mafic gabbro has come up and, uh, and so precipitated potentially its massive sulphide in these positions here. Um, how does this uh, rate uh, compare to other um, uh, big deposits around the world? Um, well, here's Little Broken Hill. Uh, there's the scale, one kilometre. And uh, here's Jin Xuan that we mentioned earlier. And uh, it's about the same size. And interestingly enough, there is disseminated sulphide at surface over about a kilometre here. But the vast majority of the disseminated and also the massive lies about 250 metres below the surface. And the surface rocks here are completely barren. So uh, again, we're not put off by um, uh, drilling deep into these things. Similarly, Voisis Bay, same scale. And uh, you can see the similarities. Um, here's the ore body, but apart from one little outcrop here, all of this material is hundreds of metres deep. And in fact, Reed Brook, I think, is down at 1,500 metres below surface. So at uh, the tops of these uh, intrusions are often uh, barren um, at surface, and it takes some clever work to find them. And you think we're being a little bit grandiose, looking for uh, something that's uh, 500 million tonnes or 200 million tonnes. Um, this is a, a map of Savannah, which you might have heard talked about yesterday, um, and up in, the, up in the Pilbara. This is a 20 million tonne ore body. It's a company maker if you were to find it. And it's that little red line that's about the width of that dot in through there as I'm shaking, uh, not due to the alcohol last night because we got kicked out early, um, uh, sitting in through there. So that's a 20 million tonne ore body. So there's plenty of scope to find a major deposit uh, at uh, the Little Broken Hill Gabbara. Um, so moving on, Commonwealth. Um, so here we are in the, in the Lachlan Fold Belt, and uh, it's obviously uh, the centre of attention at the moment because of the, uh, the porphyry copper gold discoveries. Um, our Commonwealth project is at the northern part of the, of the belt, 
uh, Katie Ridgeway, uh, obviously down here, and uh, Cal uh, sitting out through here from, uh, with Evolution, and we've got a couple of other projects in through there. But all the attention really focused back on us um, in March uh, this year, uh, just uh, before the COVID um, uh, breakout because of the, uh, the Boda discovery of, uh, of Alcane. Uh, the Boda discovery is quite interesting if you go back and look at the history of it because the first drill hole into that prospect was actually in 1969. It's taken 50 years of exploration to find the next, uh, the, the actual uh, core porphyry um, that's, a, that's responsible for much of the alteration and mineralisation in that area. And all credit to Alcane for, uh, for, for making the breakthrough. Interestingly, it's actually sitting, if you look at the scale here, about 300 metres below surface. So it's a fairly deep uh, system. Um, but some great grades, uh, they are similar to Katy Ridgeway. Uh, I saw an estimate of 8 million ounces plus um, in, this, uh, in the core of this thing and uh, it's a, a great discovery. Um, so our ground, uh, so Boda Discovery sits here. This is the Commonwealth Project. Dubbo is about 30 kilometres up through here. Uh, this is the town of Wellington. And most of our work has been focused on the Commonwealth deposit, uh, exceptional gold, silver rich uh, VMS, uh, massive sulphide, similar to Eskay Creek in Canada where there's some exceptional drilling going on there at the moment with Skeena Resources. That needs to be revisited. Um, but we got a lot of attention because there's Boda Kaiser and the rocks uh, in green in through here sort of come down onto our ground and in particular down here in the, uh, in the southwest corner at the Apsley project. And uh, there's uh, a couple of known copper prospects in through here, amazingly enough, uh, never been drilled. And uh, we've put out some rock chip samples from all five of these prospects um, over the last sort of th five or six months. Every one of them has come in with some very significant results, including three significant porphyry copper targets, Spices Creek, Boda South, but in particular, Apsley. And um, uh, one of the great things uh, nowadays is that uh, it is uh, very easy to get multi-element geochemistry. Uh, people like Scott Halley, who have well known in the industry, have pioneered uh, alteration studies. It is now possible to, uh, to get to a very significant understanding of your deposits very early on in the case just by taking very simple rock chip samples. And that's what we've done in the first instance on uh, a number of the prospects. And um, what we discovered at uh, our three porphyry copper ones is that there's a particular rock type they're called shoshonites, very high potassium rocks. These are the key things that host the mineralisation at Boda and Katy Ridgeway. Um, they're just a, a specific um, alkaline rich magma and they carry significant copper. And these are the copper assays. And we can see, uh, if you just keep your eye on the purple colours here, that as we go more potassic, the actual copper values also increase. And similarly, alteration studies, the minerals that you see around the porphyry copper, uh, basically outer zones in through here and inner zones in through here. And we can see that as you go towards the inner zones, we're getting more and more copper. Um, again, keeping around the purple in through there. So without dwelling on that in detail, we've got all the right host rocks, we've got all the right indications of alteration, and uh, we think that it, it was a very good target. So that, uh, oh, let's go back. So this is a, a classic model for porphyry coppers. Um, in our last announcement, um, I put a cheat sheet in there to sort of understand this, but we're basically looking at a zone system, copper gold in the core, and then halos of uh, other, other metals, tin, uh, tungsten, molybdenum, bismuth, tellurium, selenium, three few others around the outside. And in plan view, these form basically concentric halos around the core. So uh, we did uh, a soil sampling uh, survey, uh, 200 metres by 50, that's 500 metres, that's about two kilometres uh, up through here and 500 metres wide. And um, this is uh, a metal assemblage characteristic of the core. It's gold, copper, palladium and platinum added together. And we've got this sort of quite significant uh, core feature in through here and a very well-defined zone here and a second one here. And amazingly enough, these are the, the um, zinc, lead, manganese results, which actually basically um, form a halo exactly around this. And this is a, what we call a zinc donut. And I uh, hate to talk about donuts, uh, and it's still a long way from uh, morning tea. But um, if we look at a classic porphyry, and this is the, the um, Wafi Golpu uh, porphyry in PNG, this is exactly what we see. This is the soil sampling at the, more or less the same scale. And we see elevated zinc and the main diatreme and porphyry copper is sitting right in the middle of this uh, zinc uh, donut in through here. So um, it's a, a, a classic uh, system. And without going into detail, the other outer zones, uh, phyllic zones and advanced argillics, also mirror um, the, uh, uh, the northern parts of this. So there are two zones here. Um, and it's, it is a textbook pattern of the alteration that you would see around the porphyry copper. Now, we didn't make this up, um, but it, it is, I couldn't, we couldn't actually believe the data when we saw it. Still a long way to go to see uh, before we get there, but over the magnetic data, uh, I won't dwell on this, but 
we, we think we've got some porphyry intrusions, magnetic intrusions in the core, right in through here where the, the highest copper, gold, platinum, palladium was. Um, and then we've got these outer halos with uh, other secondary targets uh, around the side in through here. There's been no drilling. Um, there's outcropping bornite and chalcopyrite um, in many places across this, uh, this area, uh, which is quite remarkable uh, to us. And uh, we have an IP survey in progress as we speak. It's about halfway through, moving our way from south to north. And we'll cover all of this at uh, 200 metre line spacing. And one side on Arkan, um, again, the emerging province of uh, southwest uh, WA, uh, in through here, Julimar, Yarrawinda and Mora. And um, this came to our attention, some anomalous geochemistry and gravity. Uh, we pegged it, might be a deformed greenstone belt, might be deformed extensions of this material. But the day that we pegged it, um, uh, Anglo-American PLC pegged 10,000 square kilometres around us. Um, and so uh, we think that we're on to the right track uh, there. And they are actively looking for nickel copper PGEs in this emerging province of southwest uh, WA. And it's good to be able to just get in your car and drive for a few hours and do some field work and, and get home in time for tea. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been good. So that's it. Um, we've had a big resurgence uh, since uh, the start of this year. Um, rising tide does lift all boats, but um, we've uh, produced some really good results. Uh, we're now at that active drilling stage. It's going to be constant news flow between uh, you know, now, Christmas, and well into the new year. We hope to drill it absolutely before the new year, depending on uh, whether we get uh, permissions. If it's not there, it'll certainly be done by uh, in, uh, in January. And so you can look forward to uh, continuing news and continuing resurgence from impact minerals. Thank you. Nice link, nice segue. Thank you.